Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna do a Q&A video to answer your personal and luxury questions. Now let's get into it. If you're new here, my name is Trina and welcome back if you're already part of our Lux Handbag Lover family. I put out videos every Tuesday and Saturday about luxury fashion, travel, and lifestyle. If you're a Lux lover too, I'd really appreciate if you would join me here by subscribing to my channel and hit that like button down below. Also, if you like this type of content, don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified every time I upload a new video. I also love meeting other Lux lovers and fashion lovers out there, so I'd really appreciate if you would join me here on Instagram and, and let's be friends. I'd love to see what you're up to as well. All right, so let's get into the video. First off, I wanna thank each and every one of you who have submitted a question. You guys were really creative and, and sent me some good questions my way, so I'm really excited to answer more about me and, and what I'm looking for and my preferences on the luxury side as well. Also, thanks again to Samantha Mock who originally requested this video. I will link her channel down in the description box below. All right, so let's get into the questions. I have my phone here. I have the list of questions from each of you. Again, this is really, really awesome. I'm gonna start off by answering the personal questions. So the, the questions in, in the personal category or about me, and then I will get into some of the luxury questions as well. So. The first question that I received was, where did you grow up? So that's a really good question. I am actually born and raised from Hawaii. So, you know, I, I grew up and was raised there on the island of Oahu. So I love it. All of my family and my friends growing up there still live uh, in Hawaii and I try to go back as much as I can to see them. It's definitely been a little harder now with the pandemic and, and you know, the restrictions of travel. So I'm actually from Hawaii on the island of Oahu from the eastern or what we call the windward side of the island in a town called Kaneohe. So yeah, that's, that's where I grew up. Currently, I live in the Seattle area, so I moved to the Seattle area about eight years ago. So the next question is, what is your ethnicity? So really, really good question. I get that a lot, um, <clears throat> especially leaving Hawaii, you know, where a lot of people are, are very mixed. So I'm actually very mixed. Um, living in Seattle, people are like, what are you? You know, I can't tell what ethnicity you are. So, are you ready? So I am Japanese, German, English, Hawaiian, Chinese, Spanish, and Filipino. So I'm actually what we call, you know, uh, a mutt, or I'm, I'm really mixed. It's very common to be mixed of different ethnicities in Hawaii. So, so that's, that's what I am different cultures, which is really, really cool. Okay, next question. So I got a number of questions about my education, my job, what I currently do for work. So I will break this up. I'll answer education first, and then I'll answer what I do for work. Um, so uh, the question is, you know, my education, did you go to college? And if so, what did you study? So yes, I did go to college. I went to the University of Hawaii, Manoa. So it's again on the island of Oahu. And I majored in business. So um, I got my degree. I got my bachelor's of business administration in human resources. So I actually, I always knew I wanted to major in business when I went to college. I actually thought and went there to major in marketing. I thought that I'd wanna you know, do some marketing and, and do um, something on that side. Um, but I started taking some human resources classes. Actually, my mom 
recommended that to me one day. She said, I know you're really interested in marketing, um, but you know, I think you'd be good in, in HR. And I didn't even know what that was. So I took, started taking some classes in HR and moved my uh, major to human resources. So I do have a degree in human resources, um, which is really cool. Um, originally, before going to college, as, as all of you, I am really passionate and interested in fashion. So uh, I, I originally dream wanted to work in fashion, um, more on the business side. So marketing, buying, that type of thing. Um, I applied to a few fashion schools. Um, uh, on the mainland. So when you live in Hawaii, you know, the continental United States is what you call the mainland. And, um, but those specialized schools were way too expensive. So, um, I kind of shifted. I actually am glad that I got just a general business degree and I can still do fashion, you know, now here on YouTube and just, you know, enjoy it from afar. So, so that's my education for my job. So, um, you know, oh, sorry, going back, I did get one other question about education. So um, careers are so different now. Do you still recommend college? Ooh, that's a really good question. I would say that, um, you know, it, it really depends. So I think it depends on what you're looking to do. There are definitely some career paths that you know, a college degree is required, like the medical field, right? Doing nursing or becoming a medical professional, um, or if you want to, you know, do other career paths where you really need that knowledge, maybe finance or uh, accounting. Um, but I also feel that a lot of, you know, careers are changing and Depending on you, if you're a self learner and you're really motivated to learn on your own, it's not super necessary. Again, it depends on the the type of field, what you're looking to do. Um, I am seeing that quite often now where people are self starters. Um, you know, I think, and I'll get into my job, and it actually this question actually ties really into my job. I would say that it really is less about what certification or degree, again, really depends on what job you have. Some are super required to have a certain level of degree, but what I'm seeing, um, you know, that's really valuable is that experience. So work experience and in the industry. So that's education. Um, my job, so going into my job um, and what I do. So I actually work in human resources more specifically in recruiting. So I'm a recruiter for a company, uh, a really awesome, awesome company that I love. And um, I've been doing that for, you know, I've been doing recruiting for a number of years now. So I really, really love it. The main thing that I really enjoy about being a recruiter and, you know, uh, being in this role is helping candidates find a job. You know, it's really, <laughs> it really makes my day and that's the best part of my job, you know, helping a candidate or someone who's applied to one of our jobs at our company, see them through the process, be their resource and, and be their hand in hand um, to give them advice and, and get them through. And when I'm able to give them a job offer at the end of it, you know, that's, that's the cherry on top. I, I really love what I do and being able to help others find that perfect job. So, so that's what I do. I'm, I'm a recruiter. Okay. Next question. What's your favorite part about YouTube? Great question. So the main thing I love about YouTube is meeting each and every one of you, honestly. Um, everyone has been super, super sweet. I was really, really scared to start YouTube. If you haven't seen my very first video, the welcome to my channel, I will link it up here. I'm a little embarrassed to, to share it now, but you can kind of see um, my thoughts and my very first video. I was super nervous. I was super scared. 
I've been wanting to start a YouTube channel for about five years. Um, I, I love watching others and, you know, really into luxury. And in my personal life, um, you know, here in Seattle, I don't have any, you know, really close friends who are really into luxury and it's a niche, you know? Um, and so that's something that I've been really wanting to just meet other people who are interested and geeking out about fashion and not only fashion, but luxury fashion. So that's what I really love. Um, again, check out my first video. I also want to share that, you know, partially why I started a YouTube channel in addition to wanting to meet other people was I was recently diagnosed with, um, really severe anxiety. Um, and so, you know, in conversations with my therapist and, you know, getting, trying to get past those situations. So I just have general anxiety disorder and also partially some social anxiety. So some situations that I'm put in, I get really, you know, stressed about. Um, and so, you know, it was recommended to, Hey, you know, I, I mentioned YouTube and th that what I, something I really enjoyed had been wanting to do, but super terrified. And, um, they said, go ahead, you know, push, push yourself, you know, this may help you in your anxiety to meet others, push yourself into that uncomfortable situation for people to see you. So that's what I really like about YouTube so far. All of you have been amazing. So thank you. Thank you. You, you guys are the best. Okay. Next question is countries you want to visit. That's a really good question. So I love to travel, um, you know, in my intro, I say, you know, um, luxury fashion, travel and lifestyle. Um, travel is something that I'm also really passionate about. I love to go to different countries um, to see and experience other ways of life, different perspectives and, you know, just, it's, it's amazing. And so, Countries I want to visit. So these are ones that I've never been to, but are high on my list. Just to name a few, Italy, Spain, Singapore, Korea. Those are some, some countries that I've been dying to go to, but haven't had the opportunity to go to yet. Okay, next question. If you were given a chance to move to a country, which would you choose? Again, really good question. Um, I would say from my experience in the countries that I've been to that I could see myself living in would most likely be France. So live in Paris because it's gorgeous. It's amazing. You know, fashion capital of the world. Um, and everyone is really friendly and it's, it's such a great place. You sit at a little cafe you know, outside, have a cup of coffee and, uh, and you know, it's just the, ex the whole experience there. Paris is beautiful. So France or the UK. So I would say London is another place that I could see myself living. Um, very similar to Paris and France, you know, a lot of great, um, fashion, a lot, a great atmosphere. You know, there's that buzz in the air, which is really cool. So I'd say France or the UK. Okay. The next question, where do you see yourself traveling to next? So traveling to next on, uh, the next time I see myself going onto a plane and traveling somewhere is definitely back home to Hawaii. So again, I haven't been home to see my family since, oh, when was that? Probably the last Christmas. So the holidays of 2019. And so it's been, it's been some time. I, I typically try to go back to see my family, you know, at very minimum once, typically twice or three times a year. So I, I definitely, Next trip to go on a plane and, and uh, go somewhere is back to Hawaii. All right, next question. Who would you want to be stranded on a deserted island with? 
Oh my gosh, that is a really good question. I could go many different ways there. I would say, you know, and I don't want to cheat. Of course, if I could pick, it would be my husband or Paco, my little, my little guy, um, or someone on, you know, in my family. But if I didn't have the luxury and, and, you know, if it's to pick someone famous or, or just someone in general, I would say, hmm, maybe, maybe Gordon Ramsay because he can cook amazing meals and he, you know, he could be res resourceful in that way. And he seems really cool. Gordon Ramsay, um, again, I'm thinking more of tactical, um, Tom Hanks, you know, he, he already got off a, got off of a, a stranded island. <laughs> Just kidding. That's, that's a joke. Um, yeah. So I would say someone who could help me, you know, get some food so that I, I don't starve. Yeah. Someone like a Gordon Ramsay, Tom Hanks, Jason Momoa, you know, he throws axes. Um, very, very manly. Um, or if I just want to be entertained or, you know, be, um, you know, have a friend there, I would say, again, if it's not someone personal, someone really entertaining, um, you know, yeah, there's, there's a lot, a lot like Cardi B, she would be super, um, super peppy. That'd be a lot of energy. Um, or, you know, a, num a number of different actresses or people that I just want to have conversations with. Anna Wintour, she'd be very, um, very intimidating, but I would love to learn more about her life. That'd be another one. Okay. Next question, favorite coffee or tea drink? So that's a good question. I'm definitely more of a coffee drinker if I were to um, choose between coffee or tea. I do love tea as well. I really like bubble tea if you know, milk tea, um, on the tea side. Um, or if I'm feeling, you know, under the weather or sick, then, a, then a hot green tea, um, is a good one. But I would say for coffee, that's definitely my go-to. I just have a coffee maker here at my, my house, which is what I've been doing recently with the pandemic. Um, but for Starbucks, um, my order is typically an iced tall, um, coffee with soy and two pumps of classic. So that's kind of my, my go-to right now for Starbucks. What's your current favorite song? Oh, wow. Okay. So song, that's a really good question. Um, I shared this on Instagram. I'm actually, um, previously a dancer. So I was trained in dance for a number of years, um, primarily hip hop, also some jazz and ballet. Um, so I think with my dance background and, and just growing up with that experience, I typically love hip hop music or rap again, just because of my experience and it, you know, the, the beat makes me want to move. Um, so I would say, you know, my Spotify playlist is very eclectic. Um, I don't only listen to hip hop and rap, but those are, you know, to kind of get me in a good mood. I would say that I've been playing, you know, nineties hip hop and rap playlists on Spotify. Also early two thousands. Yes. Early two thousands hip hop and rap is definitely a, a great preferred as well. Um, for newer stuff on, on music, um, I would say I've been listening to Justin Bieber's new album um, recently and Eminem's album, you know, um, that came out a couple of months ago as well. So again, pretty eclectic. I go through, go through waves. And the last question on the personal side of things is how are you today? That's a super sweet question. Um, and thank you. I would say that, you know, I'm doing okay, you know, with this, the state of the world and the pandemic, it's definitely currently a situation that, you know, we're all in the same boat. And I, I truly hope that each of you are staying safe. You know, this is not, this is not something to take lightly. It's, it's worldwide. It's a really unfortunate situation. Um, 
you know, people are getting sick and, and some have lost their lives. So it's, it's definitely not a great time. Um, also, you know, being in your home, you know, I, I'm a, I'm definitely staying home, you know, working from home right now, uh, definitely have that luxury. So I'm super blessed to just work from home and only going out for groceries or, you know, really important um, errands like that. But I would say I'm doing okay. I, I, you know, my last day physically in my office for work was March 10th, which is really crazy because today is um, July 24th. So it's been some time, a, a number of months. Um, and I know, you know, we're all going through this. So I, I truly hope all of you are doing well. I'm doing okay. I did have some situations, you know, throughout this pandemic that have been a roller coaster ride, to be honest. You know, I unfortunately lost my grandfather a couple of months ago, and it's been extra hard because you know, he was in Hawaii and, and the rest of my family is there and I am not, I, I am in Seattle. So that was really rough and, um, you know, it's just, it's just a weird time, but luckily, you know, all of you brighten my day. Um, and I really appreciate all of, all of you. So thanks, thanks for that question. Okay, so those were all of the personal questions that I received. So thank you again for, for everyone that sent a personal question. Now I'm going to get into the fashion and luxury related questions. So, so let's get into those questions. The first question that I have is, how would you describe your style? Great question. I would say that my style I typically like to say it's, there are two sides to my style. One is very girly and, you know, sometimes I just want to dress up really cute, um, uh, more classic type of style, girly or classic. So a dress or, you know, a really nice blazer, um, depending on my mood. So girly and classic is one side. The other side of my style, I would say is more edgy. So I, I think again, going back to, you know, my experience, um, personally growing up and, and doing hip hop dance, I definitely have that streetwear edgy kind of style as well. You know, leather jackets, um, you know, hoodies, sneakers, as you all saw in my, you know, shoe collection as well. Um, I'd say that those are kind of the two sides and it really depends for me day to day. I wake up, sometimes I wanna be more girly, wear a dress or some, you know, like my sling backs and, and use that, um, wear that kind of outfit. And then on the other side, sometimes I'll wake up and just wanna be super comfortable, you know, wear some ripped jeans with sneakers. So it really depends. That's my style. Okay, next question. And a few of you asked this question. So um, what was the first luxury item that I purchased? Um, you know, what was, what was that item that I purchased? So, Great question. I would say that my first luxury purchase um, for myself, I would say was the Louis Vuitton key clay. So, you know, it's a great starter piece. It's super classic. I, I you know, in the monogram print, the purpose again, it's, it's, they call it a key clay. So you, there's a hook where you can attach some keys, which, you know, everyone needs keys typically. So, um, that was really useful. You can also stick some cards in there. So, so that's why I went for the key clay and it definitely didn't disappoint. Next question. What was your first luxury bag? Okay. So my first luxury bag, I would say, um, you know, it depends on what you consider luxury. I definitely, you know, when I was like 16 or 17, I vividly remember, you know, my mom buying me like Dooney and Burke, 
Um, you know, do you, does anyone remember the Dooney and Burke bag? It was black and it had colorful hearts on it. I'll try to find a photo and if I can, I will include it here. Um, so I vividly remember that. Um, moving into high luxury, um, I would say that my first bag, um, I believe, you know, again, it was kind of hand-me-downs from my mom. So I believe she handed me down her pochette accessoire and I used that for a little bit, um, but it wasn't mine. Um, I would say first luxury bag, luxury, luxury bag was um, the Louis Vuitton Neverfull um, that I was gifted by my mom. That was when I was about 20. All right, next question is, how did you get into luxury? And how did you start collect collecting luxury goods? And sorry, I'm a little sniffly. I have really bad allergies, so apologies on that. Um, how did I get into luxury? So, um, just like in my previous question, my mom is really into luxury. Um, hey mom, if you're watching this, um, she, um, yeah, she's loved luxury. You know, she loves Louis Vuitton. That's her number one brand. And so growing up, she had a, a few pieces from Louis Vuitton. And of course, growing up, you know, as, as a little girl, you kind of watch your mom and see what they're wearing um, in their closet. So growing up, I would say that, you know, she was definitely an influence in why I love luxury. Definitely, um, you know, obsessed now. So thanks, mom. Uh, you know, I love it, but sometimes my wallet doesn't, but it's it's super fun. So thanks, thanks mom, for getting me into that. Um, the next question, how did you start collecting luxury goods? Um, again, some of the, my very first pieces were gifted by my mom when I was like in high school or really young, you know, before I, I you know, moved out and, and started working and, and doing that. So um, kind of along the way, thanks uh, to my mom for gifting me some of my first few pieces. And then, you know, once I started working, because I had that passion and excitement for luxury, you know, I always tried to save up and, and purchase items. There's always items on my luxury wish, wish list. So let me know if you guys would love to see a luxury wish list video. Um, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, and so, yeah, as I've worked and over the years, you know, of course, bills and important things, you know, like your mortgage, it comes first. But any time that I can save some money and, you know, uh, buy something nice or add something to my collection, um, I do that. So thanks to my husband, you know, for allowing me to do that. Um, you know, he's really great, too. Um, you know, he's like, hey, it's, you know, it's your money. You, you work for it, so, and you save, so, so I appreciate him as well. Next question, so how did you start saving money for buying luxury products, and how old were you when you bought your first piece? So, again, kind of related to the last question, um, you know, as I started working and, and, um, you know, working full time in my jobs. Um, I just saved money here and there. Um, you know, it's also the little things I try my best, you know, when I can, or when we were going into the office, you know, to bring my lunch, um, or, you know, again, make my coffee here or, or in the coffee machine in the office, try not to do Starbucks every single day. Starbucks is definitely more of like a weekend treat for me. So for me, it's those little things. Um, also I don't, um, you know, I don't like do have like fake nails or, or get my nails done. I'm very, again, just kind of, um, more minimalist. I'll just paint my nails like more of a natural color, if anything. So save there. Um, so little trade-offs, I would say, kind of add up to you know my my luxury fashion fund. So that's that's what I do. And how old were you when you bought your first luxury piece? So again, that was the key clay um, that I bought. I would say that you know I was about. I was probably about 
20 or so when I, when I got my very first luxury piece, the key clay. I think it was around there. Next question. What is your favorite luxury brand and why? So, um, great question. I would say that my first love for luxury fashion is Chanel. So I love Chanel. I've loved Chanel for many years. I would say that the reason I love Chanel is, you know, they just come out with really cool pieces in terms of, it's very classic. You know, they have their classic flaps, which are iconic. Everyone knows and loves that silhouette. Um, but the collections that they would come out with, you know, especially in the time of Karl Lagerfeld, um, I shared this, I think in my last, last couple videos that just so iconic, you know, the, the fashion, um, runway shows, the sets were just amazing. You know, some of my, some of my favorites were, you know, the, um, space themed, um, you know, runway show with the rocket. I would say the airplane, you know, the airport kind of travel themed one in the car time of Carl, the grocery shopping, um, you know, runway. Um, and it's just, when you think back to those runway shows and the pieces, because they're so iconic and they, they're so, um, distinguished in what the theme was, you can kind of easily remember what it, you know, what, what runway show or collection it came from. So that, that's really cool. You know, like even the Cuba collection, right. Or, you know, things like that. I can already, the Cuba, I remember that khaki green, you know, it just kind of in my mind and the way my mind works, I, all the dots connect. And so that's why I really love Chanel is I feel like it's, um, classic, timeless, iconic, uh, but they also have that edgy vibe. So again, going back to my style, the two sides, the girly classic silhouettes, but also the edgy, you know, they, they try new things and do metallic, um, bags and things like that. So I, I, I love Chanel. That's my favorite. Next question. What are your favorite luxury fine jewelry brands? Ooh, that's great. So I would say that there are a few that I really like. Um, so, and, and I'm, you know, I'm actually, I don't have a ton of luxury fine jewelry. Most of it is from Tiffany, which is one of my favorite brands. Um, love Tiffany, you know, um, they have really classic pieces, um, that are just really timeless. So, if anyone remembers those, you know, Return to Tiffany, those big choker um, chains with the heart that said Return to Tiffany. I, I have that and matching earrings. Um, also the open heart uh, collection. I used to wear those earrings every single day. Um, so those are really cute. So I'd say Tiffany is one that I love and I've actually, I have pieces from Tiffany. And then the, there's a, two other brands that I really like from, for luxury fine jewelry, but I don't have any pieces yet, but it's on my list. So of course, next is Cartier. Love Cartier. Um, there's a number of pieces that I wanna get there. Uh, the Love Bangle, um, the Just Unclue bracelet, the Love Ring. Um, you know, some of, you know, some of you just have amazing, you know, stacks, um, uh, on Instagram and oh my God, I just, I just love looking at, I'm just like, like a little kid looking at all of your stacks. So Cartier is my second. And then I would say third, um, you know, is Van Cleef and Arpels. So that's um, another brand that I really love. I think is super gorgeous and cute, um, you know, to see the clover. Um, I love the Mother of Pearl um, pendant. So gorgeous. So I would say Tiffany, Cartier, and Van Cleef and Arpels. Okay, next, next question is, how do you afford luxury items? Um, so again, great, uh, going back to, um, you know, my job. So again, very lucky that I have a full-time job, um, right now still with the pandemic. So 
again, kind of those trade-offs, right? Um, not doing Starbucks every single day, um, you know, try to do home lunches when I was going into the office. I don't get my nails done or anything like that. So it's really those small, for me, those small savings that add up over time. Um, so that's what I would say is um, how I save over time. I also have a budget, um, you know, with my husband. So we use like a, it's, I just created like an Excel spreadsheet and literally it's line by line of our budget. Um, per month and what that looks like. So of course, you know, prioritizing bills, you know, mortgage, you know, utilities, all of the, you know, required things are first and foremost. And then, you know, other categories, savings, and then any other money to play with, that is, you know, my luxury uh, luxury savings fund. So that's how I've, um, I am able to get some luxury items. And the next question is, can you share your collections with us? Absolutely, yes. So, um, so far I have done my designer shoe collection. So again, if you haven't seen that, I will link that here up for you to, to take a look. Um, but yes, I, I do have another, a few other um, collection videos that I want to do. Um, I want to do a luxury ready to wear collection. So items, you know, clothing items, designer clothing items that I have in my collection. And then of course I can do a handbag collection. Um, you know, but for me it's like, uh, so I actually don't have a ton of handbags. I'm very selective. So, you know, I'm always like, Oh, I want to wait till it's, I feel like it's complete, but you know, other fashion lovers is our collection ever complete? Great question. So, um, yes, I, I can definitely do some more collection videos. Next question, so do you shop at basic stores like Target for clothes? Yes, I actually do. So I actually love to go to Target. Um, in my you know college days, I actually was an intern at Target. I was like a business intern there. Um, but part of the internship, we had to work every single job. That was a really unique experience. So um, yeah, I had to work, you know, on the floor stocking shelves. Um, I had to work in the, um, in the clothing area, you know, you know, organizing clothing by pieces and sizing and making sure the racks, you know, and clothes were folded. Um, and then I actually had to work, um, the overnight shift for the internship. So, you know, uh, when Target isn't open, like overnight hours, I think, I think the shift was like, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. or something like that. There are actually Target employees in the store working there that they their job is, you know, to get shipments in from, you know, the trucks, unload the boxes, and then start stocking shelves. So, um, so anyway, kind of, tar I'm going on a Target tangent, but when I did my internship, I love Target and yes, I definitely shop for clothing there. They actually have some good pieces, some really cute, like, um, you know, their, their own brands that they use. Um, so yes, I've gotten like shorts. I've gotten some basic tees, um, some really, some really good items there for clothing. And again, I am by no means like just a luxury snob. So I also shop you know, Zara, um, high street brands as well. Um, I'm trying, um, I'm trying my best to steer away from the super fast fashion brands just because of the environment. I know that sounds really, um, you know, people can take that different ways, but but truly, I, I, I love brands like Zara and H&M because they're so in and they have those really trendy clothing pieces that are in for that season uh, or that year. But um, truly, uh, you know, th the world right now and the number of fast fashion clothing that ends up in landfills and you know, again, I don't want to get too deep here, but I want to get to a point eventually where, you know, I'm, I'm not contributing to that. Or if I do, um, I'm not saying I'm going to cut off shopping, um, high street, but if I do add pieces from high street from now on, I truly want to make sure that they're more classic pieces that, um, you know, if I'm going to purchase them, 
um, you know, I can try to keep them um, and not contribute to all of that. So yes, I love shopping at Target and I love shopping High Street right now. Next question, do you feel like you have to wear designer for your posts? So that's a good question. I'm assuming um, that's for Instagram posts or um, you know, maybe even on YouTube when I film. Do I feel like I have to wear designer? No, I definitely don't feel pressured or feel like I have to. I actually haven't, I, I don't wear designer all the time. So if you look at my Instagram, um, I think like the last photo that I have, the top is from Express, Love Express as well. Um, top Shop are some of the, uh, is another top that I wore. Um, even in my last video, the tag from Mel and Melbourne, um, the what is your luxury name tag, I couldn't find items for every single letter. So the top that I chose was from River Island. So um, no, I don't feel like I have to wear a designer for my post, luckily, which is great. Next question is, what is your favorite YSL bag, if any? So great question. I actually don't currently have any YSL bags, but I've been looking at them for, you know, a while. Cause YSL is so cute. Um, and again, very classic. They have really awesome colors in their bags and pieces as well. So um, my favorite YSL bag, I would say, I really like the sunset bag. That's really cute. I also like the um, Toy Lulu. A lot of people have that bag. That one has gotten really good reviews and that one is really cute too. So I'd say the sunset bag and the Toy Lulu. Next question. Do you ever feel guilty after buying a new bag? Um, great question. Do I ever feel guilty? I mean, yes, initially, you know, my wallet is like hurting um, when I buy a new bag or add something that's, you know, a, a higher priced item. But um, again, I'm very um, methodical in the luxury purchases that I do. I, I, I'm definitely someone who I research, I, that's why I love YouTube. I watch YouTube videos, I look on Instagram. I really think through my purchases um, for the most part. Um, there's definitely some times where I'll just do an impulse purchase and I'm like, oh my God, I saw, you know, I just saw this one item today and I wanna buy it. Um, but I, I don't, that's very, very rare. I typically, um, you know, have thought something out. So I, I really like that. Next question, if you could only choose one luxury house to wear for the rest of your life, which one? Wow, so that's a, that's a really good question. Um, going back to the answer to my other previous question, um, you know, my, it would definitely be my favorite luxury brand. So Chanel is the um, luxury house that I would choose to wear for the rest of my life, again, how I talked about their runway shows and you know they have and my style being kind of two things girly and classic as well as edgy and fun. I think Chanel is a great balance. They have both classic, um, very ladylike pieces, but also you know they they try new things and and colors and and silhouettes. So I I I would wear Chanel. Next question, is there a dream bag that you have that you wouldn't purchase and why? So great question. I would say that I, I actually don't have any bags or even a dream bag that I wouldn't purchase. And the reason is if I don't love it, I, I rehome it, I give it to the pre-love site. Um, because for, for me, you know, there's, there's no point in keeping something if it's going to sit on the shelf or, you know, if there's someone else out there who can love it. So I, I'm all about that. So I don't currently have a dream bag that in, that in my closet that I wouldn't purchase, but I will say that there was a bag that was previously my Holy Grail handbag many years ago that I purchased. 
It was in my collection for like two years and I just, it did not work for me. So, um, and, and you know, so I sold that one on. Um, if you guys wanna know what that bag is or the story behind that, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to, you know, do a, a video on items that I've sold or, um, you know, what, what that was, what that bag was. Next question. Do you have a limit on how much you would spend on a bag at this moment in time? Yes. So I would say that at this point in time, my limit is definitely in the Birkin and Kelly range. So um, again, very blessed and lucky if you haven't seen my unboxing of my, my Hermes bag. Um, I'll link it up here for you to check out. But Hermes, Kelly, and Birkin pricing for me right now, that is like, that's my ceiling. That, that's where... You know, that's that's my biggest price. Um, and again, for, for the one that I just added, had been saving up um, and and for many years. So, so that's the pricing. Um, and then, you know, aside from that, like current state, like pandemic, just kind of every day, um, I would say, you know, my limit right now, um, again, it really, really depends. Uh, I, I am very lucky and blessed that I still have a job. So, um, you know, aside from Birkin and Kelly pricing, probably Chanel pricing, um, you know, which, which is also, they've gone through a number of price increases during this time. So I would say th those prices. The next question that I have is what bag is next on your wish list? Wow. Okay. So everything and every, anything. So that's, I, you know, again, I'm very methodical. I keep a running list of things that are on my wishes that I want to purchase. Um, and I don't just go ahead and purchase them. I keep them on that list because I found that that list is ever changing. Sometimes I'll see something or get inspired by some photo or someone's video. And I'll be like, Oh my God, I need to add that right now. It's on my wish list. Put it on that wish list. And then, you know, a few weeks later, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of over it. So um, it's ever changing. I'd say the next bag I want to purchase is, oh, man, um, I don't know yet. I've definitely been on a vintage kick. So I want to add some vintage pieces. Um, if it's brand new, of course, um, you know, I actually don't have a, like a new pochette accessoire I'd want to add, but that one's hard to find. Um, you know, pochette Matisse in the reverse is really cute. I actually didn't originally like the pochette Matisse, but I see it again influenced. Um, so that one's really cute. Um, yeah, I have a number of things. I'll make a video, but I would say probably one of those, those pieces, Louis Vuitton um, or vintage would be next. Next question, is there a bag that you think would give you purse piece? So great question. I would say that, you know, I don't think there's a specific bag that I could add into my collection that would give me that purse piece. So if, if you don't know what purse piece means, it means that, you know, you would be completely content in your purse collection, never need to buy a new handbag, which again, for, you know, luxury addicts and fashion lovers like us is really hard. Um, we all want to get to purse piece, but it's, it's difficult. So, um, again, is there a bag that would give me purse piece? I don't think a specific bag would give me purse piece, but again, I'm very methodical. I actually have a specific list of things that I, that would in theory give me purse piece. So for example, like, you know, a black crossbody bag, right? Or, or th I have categories of things and I have a full list and, and, you know, I try to check that off. I think that's the way that I would, if ever me get to purse piece is getting those things checked off for more of certain 
um, functions or colors that I may want to add or um, something like that. So I would say um, checking off those functions for, for purses. Okay, the next question is, what is one thing that you own and want to pass on to your next generation? That's a really good question. So um, I don't currently have any children, but hopefully in the future, I would love to have a daughter. Um, you know, and of course, all of my luxury pieces, pieces would go on and be passed to her. So um, that's, that's definitely the plan. Um, but if I were to choose one thing, that I own that want I want to pass on to my next generation. I'd say it's definitely the Birkin that I just purchased. So, um, you know, just for investment, um, hopefully she'll love luxury too and can rock it and, and keep and cherish it. But um, in the worst case scenario, you know, if I'm not around and she needs um, some funds, she'll have the Birkin. The next question is, do you stick in certain color bags to fit your outfit? So that's a good question as well. Actually, a, a big majority of my collection is black. So black handbags. Only recently I started to dip my toe into colored handbags and I'm really excited that I am. I think, you know, for the most part right now, I, I'm set on black and I don't plan to add any more black handbags but fingers crossed that I can, I can stick to that rule. Um, but yes, I would say, you know, when I'm picking my outfit, um, you know, I definitely try to choose a handbag um, if, with the few colored handbags that I have, you know, to, to make sure that it matches or it's a good uh, complement to the outfit. The next question is, what are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton Vanity PM? So that's a really great question. You know, the Vanity PM, if you don't know what that looks like, I'll include a photo here so you can take a look. Um, I think it's super cute and super gorgeous. Um, you know, it's it, it has come out in this really amazing, you know, it's, it, the front majority of it is in the classic monogram style. The top is in the reverse monogram and it comes with a black leather top handle with a strap. And so it is super, super cute. I really like it. Um, of course, I'm looking right now on the Louis Vuitton website and it is you know, listed as notify me. So it's very popular, really cute. I love this Vanity PM, super cute. Okay, we're at the home stretch. This is the very last question that I received. And the last question is, if you could buy any bag, no matter the cost, what would it be? So, if I could buy any handbag, uh, you know, I had unlimited funds, which would be awesome, I would definitely get another Birkin with the diamond, uh, you know, hardware on the front. So some diamond crusted hardware. I'll include some photos of gorgeous diamond encrusted Birkins um, and what that looks like. I would definitely get that. Currently, I'm not a huge exotic skin lover, so I wouldn't get, um, I wouldn't, I don't plan to get any like crocodile or ostrich or anything like that. Um, so I would supplement it with that diamond hardware. It's super, super gorgeous, super timeless. So those are all my answers to the questions that you asked me, both personal and luxury. Thank you so much to each and every one of you that asked me and submitted a question. I will include the Instagram handles of everyone who asked me a question in the description box below. So go ahead and support them. Again, you know I'm all about uh, supporting others in the community. So I will include their handles. I'd really love to know what was your favorite question that I was asked or what was the most interesting thing that you learned about me or my preferences. Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you made it to the very end of this video and you're watching this section, 
I would really love if you could add a comment down below in the comment section with the watermelon emoji. Again, I'd love that for that to be an Easter egg. Um, again, I want to know who has watched the video. This one's really long, so to the very end and, and those who do that extra support. So send me that watermelon. If you like this type of content, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I hope you join me in my next one. Thanks so much and have a great day.